Is it possible for a person to make a connection with his God if this God was absorbed by the light channel at some point of time? For example, you said that Pern was absorbed by the Christian egregore. Is it possible for people who are part of the Pern's consciousness to re-establish contact with their God? Of course, they can. First, because the Christian egregore cannot absorb such a vast mind, it has absorbed only one of its parts. But by law, the mathematical law of reality formation, God is akin to a multifaceted system. After losing one of its functions, it becomes impaired. That's what myths tell us in some way or another. Tyr, who lost his arm, lost the right to be the supreme god. Odin, who lost his eye, was forced to compensate for it via additional knowledge. For example, with help of goddess Freya who taught him what Odin did not know. And multiple gods who were harmed in one way or another in any of the fights in any particular battle, have lost the ability to resist or affect reality to the extent that used to be available to them prior. Purin remained Purin, it's just that he lost the part of his function, it was transferred to Prophet Elijah. As a result, Purin's algorithm and his connection with his projections, and people became weak or disrupted. It didn't disappear completely, but in order for this connection to be restored, the actual captured part of God Purin should also be restored, meaning that it should be freed from captivity. In the Middle Ages, there was quite a common rule that if the rulers of two countries, two principalities sign a treaty, a very important treaty for both of them, then they exchange hostages. And as a rule, children were the ones to serve that role. As a result, captured children were considered to be a great lever for manipulation of those obligated to carry out a certain agreement. A similar principle is applied here, not completely the same but a very similar one. The once captured part of a god's mind suggests that the entire consciousness can be influenced through it, meaning that in some way it will serve as a reminder about the debt, as a reminder about the agreement, about the loss. What is this captured part of the mind? These are the minds of people who are communicating with this part. They feed this part with their faith. But in this case, their faith is passed on to the captor. And after some time people connected to Purin begin to believe in Christ, in a lie to the prophet, they start feeding this part with their power, making this captured part stronger, compared to the one that is free. If people were to eject their consciousness out of this part, it will have nothing to feed on. And so it will no longer be bigger and stronger than the part that is free. And then the part that is free will be able to protect and compensate itself. If you don't nourish this part with your energy, but on the contrary, nourish the other part, the one that is free, then the liberation process will happen much faster. One can do rituals, liberation rituals, separation rituals, and cutting off the energy. In paganism and ancient practices, including the magical ones, as well as in black book magic, this was called the practice of condemnation. This is where the system called Deretnichestvo came from. When its adepts condemned the icons, they were not actually condemning a particular saint, nor Christ himself, but rather tried to cut off the energy supply from the captured part of their gods, who, for this reason, nowadays are known by repulsive evil names in which their old name can barely be recognized.
It is just a mechanism. I don't encourage you to act this way. I simply explain to you the mechanism of this process. There are actually many mechanisms of cutting off the energy supply. Typically, it would involve rituals because if we are talking about a capture by the Christian egregore, getting to the core where the control codes of this captured part are kept as possible through very rigid ritualistics. These ritualistics are called black book magic. It was, of course, condemned by Christianity. It certainly had its peak during the Middle Ages when everyone got burned at the stake burned for practicing it, or for trying, or being suspected of practice, for anything, really. It was considered to be the most terrifying threat. It was thought to be a crime against the people. Why was Christianity so afraid of it? Because it truly posed a threat with its summoning of demons, spirits, demi-spirits, by activating them, giving them power. And if the ritual was performed correctly, then it was possible to supply this deformed part with so much power that it would begin to resist. Therefore, you should consider this option. without forgetting even for a moment that the God, your God Purin, will be fighting for himself, it's his task. But you on your end can make sure this battle proves to be successful. First of all with your desire, your faith, your ritual actions, your deeds. When we do something in the name of paganism, we supply it with power and actions, faith, energy, emotions, we feed it strong part, the free part, while making the other part weaker. Although the Christians do the opposite, that is, they feed that one vulnerable part and it becomes stronger. So it's one against the other. But for now, up until recently, they were stronger because there were more of them. Their rituals have been formed over centuries, memorized for dear life. Sometimes they do things without understanding the meaning of their actions, but, nonetheless, they still work. But the right rituals which were not as meaningless from a logical point of view but rather necessary, those ancient pagan rituals were diligently forgotten or destroyed. And that is why, of course, everything has to be rebuilt piece by piece, and you even have to rely on your genetic memory in many ways, that tells you which way, how, and at what point to do the right thing, so that your God is awakened from this eternal sleep, because his captured part is akin to mistletoe. It puts the main tree to sleep. It changes its genetic nature, and over time it becomes incapable of any resistance. Some seers, when trying to find our old gods in the informational space, after finding them, they saw them not so much as ice statues, but rather as being shackled by inaction and inability to move their sleeping mind akin to a king sleeping in a grotto, a king sleeping in a cave, or a sleeping beauty, akin to King Arthur, or many other ancient heroes, for example, Sviatogor. They sleep up to a certain point and wait until someone wakes them up. To wake them up is to remove these very restraints as it was perfectly described in Pushkin's fairy tale about Ruslan and Ludmila, about Chernomer. It was necessary to remove the entangling web that does not allow any opportunity to regain strength. 
So here we see roughly the same condition. They saw them in some type of a semi-frozen, dormant, comatose state, unable to act, they hear the call but can't do anything. That's the vision some of our colleagues Sears saw.